Tommy Mark. Otherwise known as the Maverick Soul. And I am live in the Madhouse for my show, Maverick Soul Hour. Come and join us. It's the place to be. Right here on Madhouse TV, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we will put you out to the entire world. You got that right. Legal Straight Talk right here on Long Island Public Access Channel 20. Why are you playing with your toys? I want to man house day big. Hi, I'm Jerry Parisi. Welcome to tonight's edition of The Filmmaker Show. And look at that. For some strange reason, I have Michelle Parisi next to me. Welcome, honey. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> so, listen, we got a really good show tonight. It's and very exciting. I'm very excited. More than excited. It. I'm shaking and thrills, and I have my autograph pens ready and everything. Do you know Nassau County, New York, is right out of New York City, and it is one of the most premier places you can find to shoot anything you want. Absolutely, I've been hearing all about that. And <laughs> I understand that they are the nicest people to work with, I, easiest people. I heard they're very accommodating. You, and you know what, you're right. And that's what I have to attribute to our next guest. In fact, without any further ado, we're going to bring on Deborah Markowitz. And she is the commissioner of the Nassau County Film Office. Deborah, welcome to the Filmmaker Show. We are honored to have you Thank here. You. Welcome, Thank you for Deborah. having me, Jerry and Michelle. It is so impressive that when you go to these beautiful studios like Gold Coast and Grumman and you see the magnitude of a studio that big and to understand that you can shoot just about anything in Nassau County because it's got the cityscapes, it's got the parks, it's got the landscapes, it's got the beautiful this and the subliminal that. Tell me all about what it's like to be the commissioner of the film um, a group over there. Okay, well, first of all, we started uh, the Nassau County Film Commission um, 28 years ago. Um, I kind of founded it back then. Um, and at the time, you know, they had like five production days. There really wasn't a whole lot of filming at that point. And um, I had looked at it. I started doing some research into it. And I said, you know, we can make a lot of money doing this. And, um, I mean, we, we blossomed. I think there was like something like 1,600 production days last year. And it, it just continuously goes up. Um, and yeah, because we do have the great studios, um, I want to say eight years ago, uh, probably Grumman started and then Gold Coast. 
Uh, we had originally brought um, Alec Baldwin here to film a movie with Anthony Hopkins many years ago before there was even talk of it being a studio. He needed an empty space. Uh -huh. At the time, it was very difficult because part of it was owned by the county, part of it was owned by Northrop Grumman, part of it was owned by the Navy. And so we had to go through all these channels to make it happen. Mm. But he was here for about six months and he shot his film. Um, and then really we didn't have anything else there until Angel, Ju the Angelina Jolie movie Saul came and uh, we had worked to put that together and bring it into Grumman and it was a lot of work because it wasn't set up as a studio. But once that happened, then it, it took off. You know, so you have Grumman and then you have Gold Coast, which is, is close to the Grumman property. So they're independently owned? They're independently owned, yes. So you just interface with exactly. them? Okay. Exactly. So yeah, in, in, oh, go ahead, Michelle. I'm I sorry. was going to ask, what is, for the audience watching, mm -hmm. What is the function of the Nassau County Film Commission? Okay, okay. Well, basically, we interface between the studios, between the different locations, um, and the companies or the people who want to film here. And when we talk about filming, we're including major feature films like Spider-Man, which is one of the biggest movies ever filmed, used both studios and locations outside of it. Uh, we also work with commercials and television, a lot of television. I think every show that, that premiered these last two years has shot at least partially sure. in Nassau County. You know, from the family, uh, person of interest was out here all the time, Blacklist. That's I mean, right. the, the list goes on and on. Um, and also independent films. People don't realize what a hotbed of, of film activity independent films are. Tremendous amount of them. And so, so if a person was doing an independent film mm -hmm. and they wanted to film somewhere in Nassau County, mm -hmm. they need to go through a process with your office to be able to do that. They don't have to unless there's a location that we own. However, mm -hmm. if they call us looking for locations or they're looking for a certain village or they want to be pointed in the right direction, we'll be the ones to point them there. So, so anything that's owned by Nassau County? Owned by Nassau County, but office. we also work with all the different villages and the towns, and, and you know, we do actually have private homes on our website as well. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, that's only by code and town, but if they uh -huh. see something they like, they call us, they, we ask them about the project, make sure that the budget's reasonable, and then we'll call the homeowner. If they're interested, we'll put the two of them together, and then we step out. Whatever they choose to do, they choose mm. to do. But we try and get more of that. If anybody has location in Nassau County they want to list, they call a film office, We'll get, you know, they have to send us photos. We give them a form to fill out to say that they approve this, you mm -hmm. know, hold the county harmless and whatnot. And, you know, they have to use their own judgment. But, you know, then we put the pictures only with the code on the site. And then we, we just keep adding to it. That, that's it's very wonderful. That, that sounds so easy to anybody who's really wants to do something. And instead of fighting, the, you know, don't get me wrong. I love mm -hmm. being in a city day and night. Right. But the traffic is not the same. The parking is not the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm God forbid. I remember I did the the, the bleeder what right before around Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and they shot it in Glendale. Now I I'm from Ridgewood in Glendale, and mm -hmm. I was excited. Oh, I can self-report. I said I was great until I realized schmuck. There's Traffic. no parking. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, I remember yeah. thinking, oh my God, my car's going to get ticket or towed mm -hmm. or whatever because you can't park in the in the boroughs. It's hard. Right, right. And 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 you're like, okay, I got to be on a set in like 15 minutes. Please, God, mm -hmm. help me find a space here. Right. But the the beauty about it, like when I shot in Sands Point, the Americans, I just went on to the the uh, the castles, mm -hmm. parked the car there, and I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Wonderful. So Nassau County really does help the people move forward very quickly then. Sure. Wow. So, okay, let's just hypothetically, um, what do permits cost? Do they, do they have a cost? Oh, that's so varied. Um, there's, there's, um, uh, it varies so much. It depends on the job, how big it is, how many people you have, where you're filming, the village you're filming at. Um, it, it's really hard to say. If you're filming, say, at a private house and it's in a village where there's no permit fee, Whatever the deal is you work out with the, with homeowner, the homeowner is what you pay. Right. Some villages charge a permit fee, and it can go anywhere from 250 to like $5,000. So it really depends mm. on the area you want to film at. Uh, if you film a county property, um, there's a difference between if you're bringing, you know, like Annie landed a, a helicopter in, in Eisenhower Park, then we had to have all kinds of people involved. Sure. When we blew yeah. up um, or, or simulated blowing up the uh, Long Beach Bridge for the pilot of right. the Blacklist. Blacklist phenomenally expensive because we had to keep part of the bridge open. They were blowing things up on the bridge. They had people repelling out of, you know, repelling off the bridge. They had helicopters dropping people. They had people falling into the water. So you had wow. Marine Bureau, Aviation Bureau. You had the bomb squad. You had the arson squad. You had the police department, uh, uh, build, uh, buildings and bridges. You had 
um, Village of Island Park, Village of Long Beach. How exciting it would be to How be there. How exciting is that? Hey, it, it was amazing. I, I, I'm sorry it was amazing. I missed and it. It went off without a hitch, but then you also, this was only, I think, a month post-Sandy. So we also had to let everybody know in Long Beach and Island Park and whatever, so nobody got scared if they see sure. things blowing up and, and right, whatever. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I remember, I remember that. Yeah, that was, was the pilot amazing. for Blacklist. It's really amazing. On the Long Beach Bridge. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. And that's such a beautiful bridge, too. Mm -hmm. Very yes. picturesque. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that took a lot of coordinating. Oh, tremendous. But what about for the average, everyday, independent filmmaker? Let's, mm -hmm. let's take it from that point of view for the moment. Um, you know, they, they have very small budgets generally, mm -hmm. or they work on the cuff, or a lot of them do guerrilla wherever they mm -hmm. can. Tell me how important or, or how bad that is or good that is to do that. Well, first of all, if it's very low budget, I always tell them, try the friends and family plan. And I actually coined that phrase from Ralph Macho when he was doing his own um, short film, uh, Love Thy Brother, I think. Yeah, Love Thy Brother many years ago. And uh, it's like, you know, if you can't afford it, because a lot of these people aren't going to let you come into their home. Right. Some will let you come in maybe 500 if you're really small, only a few hours. Most may want 5,000, you know, so it really depends. So I try and tell people, don't ask for a big mansion for a week and your budget's $500. Because right. what, about, what about using county property if it's a small independent? It, it depends. If it's something like Eisenhower Park, you got three people and a camera. That, you know, if, if there's not a lot going on, they might say, oh, you, you can do this for, you know, X amount of money really inexpensively. Um, if you've got tons of people, 300 people, then obviously it gets much sure. more expensive. Sure, and so electric We try and, and work with you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so we try All right. and work what with about, you. What about the independent guys who run around with a camera quick? You stand there, you do this, throw that up in the air, and... Three, two, one, do it! Hurry up, yeah, fast! As then... long as you don't get caught. The problem is, <laughs> you know, the problem is if you get caught, you know, and and if it's low budget and you just have a camera and you walk away, maybe it's not that big a deal. But if you're you've got a plan on these days and you have actors, you know, that you're paying, and then all of a sudden you can't film, that's not a position I'd want to be in. No, you know? yeah. right? You right. know, I'm not saying people don't do it because I'll see things that come in and I'll see. It looks familiar, and I don't remember that. You know, yeah, I don't exactly. remember giving that permit yeah. out. Uh, I mean, I always find it better to, to do it the right way. But if you're filming in your family's house and, and nobody knows, you know. Well, if you're filming in your family's house, yeah. it's nobody's business either. It's yeah, your right. family's you, house. You'd be surprised. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised. Oh but, uh, and then some villages you have to worry about parking. But a lot of times what they'll do is if there's not a lot of parking on the street or it's a very um, affluent community, maybe they'll rent like the parking lot of a church or they'll rent something so the parking's off the street. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that are very savvy in this business, um, you know, so they, they, they really help people get what they need. Wow. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for a fact, and, and I, I didn't get a chance, we just missed it, but you actually get a bus going mm -hmm. in December mm -hmm. and you actually show people mm -hmm. the different locations am i correct yes absolutely and you show them the affordability and all these different things and why mm -hmm. it's good to use this and that and the other thing mm -hmm. tell us about that that's very good yeah, the city doesn't do that i want to say we started that about five years ago uh it's called the film friendly nassau county location and studio tour uh, we did almost the same one for the first five years something would you know if somebody would sell something and then we had to move location but we always showed things like um the county, the Theodore Roosevelt uh, Executive and Legislative Building, because it's really gorgeous. We've had a lot of filming there. Uh, usually the Correctional Center. Uh, that's been off the chopping block, uh, the filming block for a little while now, but I think that's going to come back. Uh, we'll take them to usually a hotel. will donate rooms for the night. Oh wow! You know, for the filmmakers um, and the producers, directors, whatever. And then um, so they'll get to scout that as a potential location. Um, they will also uh, we'll go to a couple of different restaurants. We'll go to some office buildings. We'll go to a couple of mansions. We went to Sands Point this year. We mm -hmm. started with. Sands Point, lost her for a few years, but now that's back again. Again, this year was a completely new tour, uh, so it was a lot of different things. But we've taken people uh, shooting at, at, a, at a rifle range. We've taken them on the merry-go-round, you know. At, oh, at, that's at wonderful. Museum Row. So it's different sure. things that we do all the time. We try and keep it fun. Is it once a year? It's once a year. We uh -huh. usually do it the first or second week in December. Uh, very small bus, so there's only like 14 people we can bring. Uh, but it's, it's a very limited window because you go from when they're filming like crazy so before they all leave for vacation or before, right, right, you know, right. all the sure. Christmas parties start. So it's uh, usually right, the yeah. coldest day of the year or the rainiest day of the year. But mm. uh, we try and usually do it the first week of December. That, that's just amazing. See, that, that is so key to selling something that's, that people don't know. Because people basically know, okay, the New York City. In fact, I don't even think that people outside, like on, on my friends on the West Coast, mm -hmm. when they hear New York City, Oh, you're shooting in Manhattan. Where's Queens? They don't. They don't get that. Yeah, yeah. They don't understand it. They get Long Island, mm -hmm. but they don't see it right. as that, mm -hmm. which is so sad because, what is it? 
maybe 30 minutes away from, the oh, yeah, from Manhattan absolutely. itself. Yeah. Right. It's only 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what, Borough of Queens touches Nassau County, right. so there you are. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the process to do that? Do you call the film office? Hi, I'd like to use... Yeah, well, usually they'll call us. Uh, well, uh, you know, myself, one of my assistants, they'll take their, all their information, you know, how many people, how long do you want to be there, what are you looking for, any specifics we need to know. Um, and then sometimes they have the location in mind uh, that they, they're looking at, how do I get there? Sometimes I have no idea what I want. Can you please try and find that for us? Sure. And we might have pictures of it. We might know of something. Uh, we also have tremendous amount of lists of, of almost everything you can think of. And uh, so we can send that to them. Uh, and sometimes we have a couple of things we want more, so what I'll do is I'll post things on Facebook or social media, and we have some things in mind generally, but maybe you have something we haven't thought of. Mm -hmm. And so we really try and outreach, you know, send things out to all the villages and, and see what else is out there, you know, and help them that way. That must be so very if, respectful. So mm -hmm. if someone said, we're looking to do a bar scene from the 1800s. Oh, okay. Uh, That's a little more difficult. Uh, but what I'll do is that, in, in that case, I would email something out to my village. Let's say, who, who has this in your area? Sure. You know? Right. And then they'll get back to me. and you know, yeah, we'll Almost like a location touch. service in a way. In a way. We, we don't actually usually go out unless it's one of our buildings in the area. But, but um, you know, we have all the information to send out to people. Mm -hmm. And then they want to scout themselves anyway, generally. But. Yeah, they'll send a scout and mm -hmm. all the other things along with it, sure. Right. But that sounds so simple. So are, you... are there parameters yeah, that's in, a good in question. the filming? That mm -hmm. If it's a county, if it's one of your county well, locations, are there, the are there location. parameters? Yeah, it, it, it depends on, on the location. It depends what they're doing. Um, like one of the most expensive things, if you have a shoot where somebody has to have prop guns, you got to have cops supervised. You must have police there to supervise. Right. Okay. Anything that's on the road, you've got to have police supervised. Um, if you're going to, you know, burn something, you got to have the bonfire unit. You've got to have, right. you know, there's certain things you have to have um, in, in that way. Um, so we have to find out what exactly they're going to do and is, do we need anything to keep the public safe, which is, of course, the number one concern always. You know, you don't want this to affect What anybody. kind of trouble, this is an important one, mm -hmm. what kind of trouble can someone get into just by doing something and let's not, let's make believe it's more than just a camera without legs uh, or sticks. And it just happens to be a handful of actors. Let's say they're using a, a bridge in Valley Stream over the little thing in the Valley Stream Park. And they're doing it at 6 a.m. Nobody's there. And they're going to, the guy and the girl are going to run from far away. It's a slow motion shot. They're going to mm -hmm. run. They're going to kiss on the bridge. And then from there, they're going to hold the kiss and titles will go down. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking, okay, there's nothing really here. We mm -hmm. don't need the lights. We're using existing this. Right one camera, and now Nassau County police come up to them. Well, it's say, probably not uh, going to be Nassau County per se. It may be, but in the villages, I think you're more likely to, uh, let's they're say, watching everything. But you, more than likely, you're going to get asked to leave, although I have been on the phone with people many years ago, filmmakers who I still know to this day, that I had to keep them from going to jail. Really? Uh, at, yeah, because they were filming. It was after 9-11, nine, uh, nine and they were filming in back of a, um, I guess it was a water uh, treatment place. and. Okay. And they called me up, like, Debbie, could you please speak to this guy? I was like, okay. And I know, and I had to tell him, I, I know them. It's because like, I'm supposed to be here. He was ready to have them all. He was detaining so them. So it wasn't necessarily that they were doing something illegal. Well, they shouldn't. They didn't it have a permit. Just, right. Yeah, they didn't have a permit. So Is it illegal not to have a permit? Depends where you are. But this was private. This was private property. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it was owned by, uh, maybe it was Tana Hempstead, I'm not sure, but it's like, they had no, you know, they really didn't have the right to be on the property. They didn't have a Right, that's trespassing. Yeah, That's and a they, different trespassing, story. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Um, so but if, that, they go, if someone goes into Eisenhower Park mm -hmm. and films? Well, they'd probably ask you to leave if, mm -hmm. if you didn't have a permit. Or, or I've actually done permits. I don't like to do this, but I've done permits on the day where somebody was, one time somebody was at the beach and they didn't have a permit. They said, oh, they, and they knew me and they said, you have a permit? I'm like, they don't have a permit. I said, okay, you got half an hour to get over here. I'm going to pull you a permit because don't get me in trouble. You know, you got to have a sure. permit, <laughs> you know. Um, some right. villages, if they catch so you, beaches, they'll just ask you to beaches, leave. they have to have permits. You, you need to you need to make sure you gotta clear it. You know, mm. so, some people, like I said, it's, it's some villages are much more lenient than others. You mm -hmm. know, and, and um, some villages will basically come over and say, you know, come in and pay, or you're out of here. You know, and it's mm -hmm. just you know they will give you, and they'll be nice sometimes and say come in and do this. And sometimes they'll send the police after you. So, you know, you really so gotta that's, be careful. but they're sympathetic to small filmmakers who Most don't have are. a lot of money. Most are. Some don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could imagine because actually, you know, we, we actually have a criminal lawyer coming on on January 20th, if I'm not mistaken, Kevin mm -hmm. Kieran. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the topics we're going to speak with Kevin is 
is the illegal use of cameras and things. You know, mm -hmm. some people do the wrong things across right. the board, mm -hmm. and we're not going to get into it now, but mm -hmm. the reality is then I could see the cops needing to step in. Mm -hmm. On, on another level, because we've all been there, done that at some time in our life, mm -hmm. we've taken a camera and shot a scene, and it was all done in 15 to 20 minutes, mm -hmm. we ran back, right. and we did what we had to do. Mm -hmm. What's the harm in it, you, you're asking mm -hmm. yourself. And so if you got arrested for something like that, I, I imagine there's a I fire. don't know anybody that's happened to. I know that there is one of our locations many, many years ago, and they were doing, oh, it was a Harrison Ford movie, whose name is going to escape. Oh, but mm -hmm. that's a big movie. Something though. innocent, presumed innocent, is that? Oh, presumed innocent. Yeah, innocent. and they were in a very exclusive area, and I also got a call from the police because they're putting leaflets in people's mailboxes. Oh, you can't do that. There. Right. So, really? Yeah. So I had to say, was he that? I think it was presumed innocent regarding Henry. I don't remember which one, but you know, so they had to leave. But it's like, don't, if you see specifically no soliciting allowed whatsoever, don't don't do it. Don't do know? it. Right. Don't do it. Right. And what well, that's we, that's different. That's not actually doing the filming. Right. Right. That right. That was soliciting. Right. Mm -hmm. What were they soliciting? The the. the they were, looking, they were looking at homes, yeah, and they, oh, they found some gorgeous homes. Oh, so they were basically we'd like to use your house yeah. for something. Yeah. Oh, and you can't do that? Some areas you can't. Some you can. Some you can't. This that area actually could. had uh, happened to a friend of mine in Bethpage recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then usually so, they'll call me. What, if I've worked with scouts before, they'll say, look, I'm looking in this area. Can we put your name down? And sometimes people will call and say, hey, somebody left it. Is this legitimate? And then I'll look and just say, look, I don't personally vouch for anybody. You know, they could have become psychotic overnight, but that doesn't yeah, generally exactly. happen. <laughs> but, you know, but I'll say, look, I can't have worked with them for 10 years and we've never had a problem. You right, know, you got to make right. your own decisions. But I know this person has been tied with sure. this, you know. And whatever. anything with a gun or something like that. Oh, you always have to have police. You should always, tell her the always, story always. about happened to us on The Hidden. Oh well, my gosh! We we were he, he was an, uh, in the actor mm -hmm. on a, the on the set of Farm the movie Hidden that was being done in Long Island, and mm -hmm. he was playing a news reporter yeah. that had the effects that it had on uh, on him over time, mm -hmm. always new, doing news broadcasting in war. Mm -hmm. So we don't know these people very well. We go out east, and they the had prop guns. And I'm like, they were not prop guns. They were real guns. Oh no! That, I thought that they, they with, were prop guns. with with blanks. Yeah, that's real not. guns with blanks. They were loud, but go on. So, yeah. so we were out east, at some exit off the LIE. Far. We're and, talking bushes yeah. and sticks. The and I said, time. I, said the yeah. I said the police are going to come because it was and very they said, loud. They said, no, we're so far away from everybody. No sooner do I say it. <laughs> that four police four cars Suffolk came County careening down. Car. All but like Hill Street Blues. Remember the beginning <clears throat> of that? And then, oh my they, God. They all jump out of their cars with their hands on their holsters and said, everybody put your hands up over your head. I was holding a video camera because I was doing B-roll. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm like this. And the guy goes, are you filming, ma'am? And I'm like, no, no, it's off. It's off. <laughs> it's definitely off. And we were all patted down. Mm -hmm. And I was never so scared in my life. Here's yeah. the funny thing. The the um, the cameraman, they were using the the small SLRs. Okay. Okay, they weren't using the big reds, mm -hmm. and so he held his hands up high while one of them was on, but the one he wore around his neck was recording the whole thing, and so as he's doing this, mm -hmm. he's going like this, and there and everybody's being pat down, and they grab I guess the uh, the production manager, mm -hmm. they brought him over, they examined the guns, mm -hmm. they looked at them. I don't know. I, they came over to me. They said, what do you do? I said, I'm sorry. I'm just a paid actor. Mm -hmm. And I have no, you know, interest in the movie other than acting. Mm -hmm. And they left me alone. They left her alone. And we watched the whole thing unfold. Basically, they left. They left one they squad. Left? Caught, they left with one the squad. Fake, with the props. They yep. wouldn't do that in NASA. I know. It's different. It's a yeah. different mindset. Yeah. They left one police car there for about a half an hour more. Mm -hmm. We did our thing, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and then he left. And we finished up. And I was pretty amazed mm -hmm. that that went so easily. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, what I'd like to do is um, get into a little bit what's coming up on our next show. Mm -hmm. And that is you, Deborah Markowitz, as a producer mm -hmm. and a director. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to guess a lot more hats. Mm -hmm. But the videos that we are going to be showing, they were pretty damn good. And I, I have yeah, to I can't wait to see them because I didn't <laughs> get a chance to see them. <laughs> But, All good. Uh, but before we before we wrap up, because we're getting close to wrapping yeah, up, we are, yeah. could you tell people who want to get in touch with you Great at Nassau idea. County how they could do that? Sure. Uh, well, they can um, email me. Uh, well, actually, I can email the film office at nassaufilmoffice at nassaucountyny.gov. 
NASA Film Office at nasacountyny.gov. Mm -hmm. uh, they can call the office at 516-571-3168, 516-571-3168. We also run the Long Island International Film Expo, which is mm. also known as LIFE, July 13th. Uh, to the 21st this year. And, and, we'll and we've that. both, we've we've both been there, been there before. Great. And that's, that's great. That's yeah. phenomenal. And one of the things that I liked the best about it was the way you guys had these tables set up in Love the, in the uh, where the filmmakers were mm -hmm. able to right, meet and greet and interact with you and, mm -hmm. and some of your staff. Right, right. And it was, it's a wonderful, marvelous experience. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Yeah, guys. we'll yeah. Totally July, talk about that yeah. on July the next 13th show. Through. And LongIslandFilm.com, they can find out all the Long information Island. as it happens. We're, 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 they're looking through submissions now. I'm not a judge anymore because I just touch way too many films, but they're looking at submissions now. Um, I know that we have Robert Clahessy is going to be one of um, our honorees this year because he's been a friend of the foundation forever, mm -hmm. and we've never he's been one of our presenters. And we finally said, why don't we? He's getting really big now because he's on Blue Bloods, and everybody else in the world is calling me. Can we honor him? I said, well, why didn't we ever honor him? He's like, you yeah, know, yeah, really. So we're honoring him. We're honoring Sal Rendino, who's an actor who's in some of my movies as well. But uh, he's on a new show called The Get Down, and a recurring is Stan Kelly. He's in he's in Billions, and because all of a sudden he's starting his career, starting to explode, it's like let's grab him before. His career, yeah, explodes. and so, it's so funny. She's sure. getting a Rising things. Star Award, and Angela Anton from Anton Newspapers is, is nice. going to get awarded with a humanitarian award. And there'll be a lot of celebrities. It's usually a very jam. Oh, that's night and we're going to talk about that on the next show. Okay. But so here's the deal: if you're watching us on Madhouse TV, stick around. We got another whole half hour of fun with Deborah Markowitz and her her uh, her own videos and movies, and talk more about life, which is an incredible film exposition. It happens here in Long Island, New York. If you're watching us on Channel 20, then please, we invite you back next week at the same time, same place, Monday at 2 p.m. on Channel 20, Island Wide. And for that, I say thank you, Michelle Parisi. I say thank you, Deborah Markowitz. Yes, we'll be right you, back Deborah. with you. And to the eclectic four who never, ever stop. Uh, guys, you got to go to the grand opening of the uh, new restaurant. The Mousetrap. The Mousetrap Cafe and Amityville. Restaurant in Amityville. Uh, you, you could be... You could... <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving out key points key here. Key points here. <laughs> but to Tom Mealy, Tommy Marr, Vicky Mealy, and Janine Zarilli, I thank you on their behalf, and I thank them as well. Without them, we wouldn't have Madhouse TV. So either stick around or we'll see you next week. Good night.
Tommy Mark, otherwise known as the Maverick Soul. And I am live in the Madhouse for my show, Maverick Soul Hour. Come and join us. It's the place to be. Right here on Madhouse TV, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we will put you out to the entire world. You got that right. Legal Straight Talk right here on Long Island Public Access Channel 20. Why are you playing with your toys? I want to man house day big. Hi, I'm Jerry Parisi. Welcome back if you're here with us on Madhouse TV. And if you're just joining us this week on Channel 20, well, we got a treat for you. Deborah Markowitz, the film commissioner of Nassau County, is also a producer and a director. And tonight, Michelle, we get to see some of her trailers, which I are can't, amazing. I just, I just can't wait. No, I, I was so excited. So without any further ado, Deborah's back. And welcome back to the show. Thank you show. very much. So, Deborah, to just point out where we left the last show, mm -hmm. We were talking a little bit about the film festivals, mm -hmm. life in general, right. the one that you guys run, which mm -hmm. is amazing. We've always gone. Mm -hmm. We've always had a great time. And you've always packed the house. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You, even me, I still get a little starstruck. It's funny. On a real set, I don't care. Yeah. Like when Amy Schumer sat next to me, I was like, oh, there she is. But if for some reason, if I'm watching something on a big screen, like at your, at your festivals, and there's this guy who did an amazing job, like Knuckles, that, that time years ago. Mm -hmm. Remember that movie? And mm -hmm. 
he did that. He sat next to me. I'm like, well, that's you? Really? I, mm -hmm. I was like, wow. You still you know get is? that. There's yeah. So much, there's so much excited, heightened energy. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, sure. And, and a sense of community mm -hmm. that I sensed yeah. going there. Now, I think the Long Island International Film Expo, or LIFE as we call it, really is the premier film community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, we do have the glitz. We do probably have more celebrities than any other film festival. You do? However, it's very, it's much more low key, it's much more um, accessible. You know, that, that you can be sitting next to somebody, you can be, you know, it, it, it's everything's mixed in. It's, it's more of a film community. I think more people meet at life and end up working together. And even you know? the way you break up the films that people view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you can go to part of it, you could go to all of it, mm -hmm. you get a nice cross section. Right. It's, it's just the whole way Very, it's put together. It's like, is so it's like a red carpet Hollywood type thing, which mm -hmm. I love going to every year, that's for mm -hmm. sure. But you know what? You're a filmmaker. I am. And you're a director, and you're a producer, and a casting director, and a casting and director, a writer, ladies and gentlemen. And what, what I'd like to know is, how did you get into all of this? Yeah, let's start oh, from the beginning. Boy. Um, I mean, beginning is back at Nassau Community College five million years ago when I took drama, and I was. An and she's only student. twenty-six years old yeah, too. Right. That's what kills me. And um, <laughs> I, I just realized after one or two semesters that I wasn't able to make a living doing that, so I believed. Mm. And uh, then I started the film commission. I went into business, I was business management, and uh, started, I started as a special assistant to the county executive and then discovered there was um, a department of uh, commerce and industry, and they would do two, three permits a year, and, and I, I started looking into it, go, you know, we can make a lot of money if we do that. So then I started the Film Commission in 1988. And then um, several years after that, now going into our 19th year, we started the Long Island International Film Expo. And um, probably about three years ago, I've helped people, um, because I, I meet a lot of celebrities uh, for the film festival. Sure. Is people would occasionally call me and looking for certain people. And uh, about three years ago, uh, somebody showed me a script and uh, wanted a certain actor who I know. And I looked at the script and I said, that's not who you want. And he said, well, I said, because it's, no, there's a shower scene. Nobody wants to see this person in the shower. <laughs> you need a really, you know, because, well, who do you know? And I showed him a couple of reels of celebrities I know. And he goes, can you get them? I said, well, we can ask. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, and um, so he just finally, after giving him a couple of suggestions, he said, would you be my casting director? And I said, well, I've never done it before, but I'm not stupid. I'm sure I can figure it out. And I ended up casting this movie called My Cross to Bear. Director mm -hmm. Peter Bongiorno was the writer and director. I remember that name. I, know I that remember name. that movie. Yeah. And yeah. it really yeah. was. I mean, Emmy, yeah. Award, Emmy Award winners and nominees involved in this. And here I am casting this movie. So after that, that was great, wonderful, had best time ever. And I also had produced it. And then um, I said, all right, I'm not going to do that yet because I, 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 got, I got a lot of stuff I want to do. I'm also a writer. That was I'm a novelist. I have a Karmic Wind trilogy. That's really where my, uh, you know, my focus was. But I, I know sooner finished. Um, I crossed a bear, then I get a call from um, the person who runs the Queen's World Film Festival and said, look, you know what, I have this filmmaker friend, she's got a great script, would you read it? And because I love her, I went, oh, fine, I'll read it. She needs help casting, fine, I'll read it. Uh, Ten pages in, I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever read in my life. Uh, called Living with the Dead, it's a feature film, it's not a zombie movie, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous film. And I ended up casting it for her and became the executive producer. So now I finished that, now my phone is not stopping ringing. So I understand I'm in film office during the day and then at night and weekends and vacations and when everybody else is sleeping is when I'm starting to do <laughs> that. So you've, you've kind of been molded into oh, this position. People are pushing me. I mean, it's just crazy. And, and, and then um, about three years ago, I had written this uh, short script that just came from an idea of walking around the park, uh, you know, walking the dog uh, called The Last Taxi Driver. And I showed it uh, to a friend of mine who wanted to read it. And he's like, Debbie, you have to make this into a movie. I said, well, I don't, huh? And he goes, no, you, you need to do this. I said, well, what do I, I don't know anything about this. He goes, so you'll learn. So then there was the discussions of do we get a big name, do we not get names, do we do this for no money? If I get a name, then this has to look good, you know? So sure. I, I found this really talented crew of, of, of young filmmakers who just right out of college. I'd seen their movies come through the film festival, so I knew they knew how to make a movie. And we kind of brought most of them on as producers, and we had my first movie, which is The Last Taxi Driver, uh, with That's Robert Plahessy from Blue Bloods and Deb Twist from Kick-Ass. And, and, uh, Deborah Emily Twist, Jackson. yeah, I just friended her yeah. recently. Yeah. You know what? Let's do this. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get into too far, let's go with those films right now, and hopefully okay. they're in the right order. And Vicki, if you wouldn't mind running the first one, these trailers are beautiful. I know, Michelle, you wanted to see, so yes, you sure. get a chance first, uh, first chance. Yeah, there's here language in this, just so you know. Oh, that's okay. It's not we're, a problem. We're not a Christian station, <laughs> as we one time pointed out. <laughs> the country continues to be in a state of emergency. How are you still out here? Me? That's what I do. We ask that you remain inside. Oh. Highways are closed. 
<laughs> there is no public transportation. Hey! A new world awaits us. <laughs> Just open the door! <sighs> we will survive. Freaking deadbeats. Be safe. God bless you. And God bless America. Wow. That was, <laughs> that was incredible. Those Thank are you. beautiful cuts. Thank you. And the type and all of that, mm -hmm. that, that says something. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Where did that one come from? Uh, last taxi driver happened with just walking around the pond with my dog. My boyfriend and I have the, just the most insane ideas that just we start making jokes and talking about crazy things. And it's just like if there were only zombies left and you were a taxi driver, what would you do for a living if you didn't want to give it up? <laughs> and so, you know, we, we wrote that as a script. My friend said we should make it. Um, uh, we were deciding, did we want to get an, you know, if I was going to raise money and we were going to get a name that I had to look great. So I had to find really good filmmakers. I have a phenomenal editor, Robert LaRosa, is amazing. My director of photography, Mark Ryu, is just unbelievable. We may want to know a director from you very soon. That's what we've been looking for, somebody good. A good director? Uh-huh. Well, I'm the director. Ah. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then I got also uh, Corey Diskin, who you met, who's my production Corey's designer, wonderful. who's amazing. Yes, yes. Um, I, I mean, I've met so many really talented people, and we put together this team, you know, and, and I knew that they would make it look the way I wanted to, and of course you work with them. Sure. You know, you sit there, oh wait, move this, move that, move that, what if we move this, and okay, ah, oh, something's not working, let's try that, and mm -hmm. it's just, you know, until you get what you want and you're happy with it. Um, but I remember thinking this was going to be a horror film, and I'll never forget. I'm looking over, looking at my and my boyfriend John, who you know, John, John Marion, Marine. amazing yeah. actor. And, and John said to me, "You don't really realize how funny this is." I'm like, "What do you mean? It's supposed to be scary? Because this is not scary. This is funny. It's hilarious." <laughs> and then I love when I sit in the audience, and, and I, I um, like all my movies are very different. So I've only seen Leaving and and Taxi Driver in the movies yet, because By Blood was just done. And so I, I sh a couple of times they played together, and I'd sit there in the audience, and I'd see Taxi, and they'd laugh at all the right, right moments, because it's hit a lot of film festivals now, it's won a lot of awards. I'm like, yes! And then leaving, I would sit there, and, and you'll see, I guess, that trailer next, but I'd, I'd be looking around at certain key points where I want to see people just start going, <laughs> like, yes! You know, I make them cry. So I so, so far I've been able to make people laugh and make people great. cry. That's I know. Great. So you're getting emotion, which is what sure. you want. Sure. What you, what you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That, that's Absolutely. beautiful. Let, let's run the next one, which is... Um, leaving. Leaving. You know it's not healthy to keep going back, Emily. That's not fair. You didn't do anything wrong. How can people heal if you don't give them the space they need to get on with their lives? I've given them space. I've given them too much space. I look around. Everything's changing in some way. Never hurt my family. You think it's easy for your family? You popping in and out when you miss them? It wasn't your fault. I never thought it was. I just feel like they're not going to even remember me. Like this is never real. I'm just going to disappear. You can't ever disappear. I just want to stay. Can I please just stay? Bullseye. Yeah. Wow. Bullseye. Again, bullseye. Again, bullseye. Now, it's it's you 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 were a film student. This is where this all came from or I was never a film student. I can't even tell you where this comes from. I just actually I can tell you where leaving came from. Um, as I said, I was always a writer, but um, I had woken up one morning at like 4.30 in the morning crying my eyes out and I was trying to remember what the heck my dream was. And I started to remember parts of it and I went. That needs, it was so vivid that I said, that really needs to be a movie. And so I got mm. up, and I had, um, by 7.30, I had the first draft of the screenplay. And um, I had sent it to Joe Halsey, who's been sometimes producing partner. He stars in Leaving. Mm -hmm. um, he also stars in my movie By Blood. But I'd cast him. I'd actually seen him in auditions. Most of the actors I use, by the way, I've seen in auditions for other projects. And sometimes they didn't even get the job. But right, I no, them. sure. If right. they're great, sure, I sure. keep them in mind. And so I sent it to Joe, and Joe said to me, you know what? I love this so much that if you want to make it, I'll help you raise the money. Are and these movies shorts? 
These are shorts. Okay. So far, they're shorts. Yeah, I've worked on features. I've cast and produced features for other people, but mm -hmm. I haven't made my own feature. Right. Yet, so, so the ones we're seeing tonight, yeah. the, the, these yeah. are the trellis. But for everybody's shorts. like, these should all be features, and maybe one day they will be. There is sure, plans to make taxis on for it. Feature. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's the way it's done. You you know, there's two types of trailers. There's mm -hmm. this marketing trailer mm -hmm. that when the people going around to the different investors and they're all sitting in the room, mm -hmm. they they open the trail. This is about the movie. This is about the production company. Mm -hmm. Here's your sample. But it's not really the same trailer you see in a movie. Right at all exactly. this is the representation of what might be mm -hmm. to give them a visual a visual right. uh, because a lot of times the people who are behind the money don't have the creative visuals right. mm -hmm. and stuff like that our third movie let's get right to that okay do you want me to... yep and and that one's called it's called Vinny. I miss her. She really loves you. 14 years just flew by. Hey. They say that's what happens when you're happy. Just had a good life with you. I all screwed it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're getting it now. She's good, Jimmy. Just give me your key. What are you flagging me, Gus? Sometimes. You just know things. I do. I don't understand any of this. We're writing history. Her and I belonged together. You were married. Oh, no. Before. So what happened? <laughs> Everything. Everything. And nothing. Three for three. Bullseye. I, I said bullseye for the last two. <laughs> I <laughs> said you. bullseye Thank for this you. one. You're reading my script again. Yeah. There you go. Well, well, now, <laughs> you know, this is what I noticed in that one. Forgive me. I, it, whoever the DP is, whoever's wow. framing those shots, yeah. that composition yeah. is gorgeous. Yeah. Mark Ryu. Phenomenal. What's his name? Mark Ryu. Mark Ryu. Get him on my show immediately. I'll, he'll probably come out here. Yeah. Book him immediately. Yeah, we'll get you. He's amazing. But, you know, we sit down, we go over the shot list, what I want, and... and the, the hardest thing about By Blood, which I really think is the best one I've done so far, is I always direct my monitor. I want to see exactly what it's going to sure. look like. If I don't know it, you know, whatever. Um, we uh, rented also a movie, a free will movie, which uh -huh. is uh, like a steady cam almost that yeah. you can do. Any so we planned all the shots according to that. And Mark calls me up the night before. He goes, Debbie just came in. The box is dented. I'm like, what? So he takes pictures of it, sends it to the company, and it doesn't work. So now we have to redo all our shots. So not only that, oh we have three monitors, and John's, my John's hooking, John Marina's hooking it up to the camera. It's not working with, none of them are working with the camera. Now we find out that the Black Magic we use, we rented a Black Magic 4K, only works with a specific monitor. We didn't know, nobody knew that. So, so now we're like, what? A, so, so two hours later, you know, they're fidgeting with everything, and my, my um, AD came up to me and she said, production manager says we have to move on, which we did. Because we already got people there for, for two days or three, three days. So I have people, one came, flew in from Florida. I have Jackie Martling lined up. I have all my other actors lined up. And it's like, all right, we got to go on. And I'm like, Mark, I got to trust you. And I trust Mark because sure. what I see, he makes happen, like exactly like I see it. It's, it's unbelievable. So um, I'm watching the actors, making sure, trying to envision it's on the screen. And you're not going like this, per se, but really watching. I really know I'm getting these powerful performances. And he nailed everything. The only thing we didn't get was one of the latest shots because there was something that was supposed to happen. And I don't want to give away anything pivotal, sure, no, sure. but it didn't come out. And, mm. and it's like, well, what do we do? Do we shoot it? But now it's, it's three weeks later, and who's gained weight? Who cut their hair? Who, you know, what do we, we'd have to shoot this entire scene again, and we can't do it. And for, for a month, I'm pulling my hair out saying, okay, let's try this. Let's try that. This isn't going to work. I'm like, I don't care if it's not going to work. Let's try it. And it, we had to take about 10 different things and put them together where finally it's it like move a frame here, move a frame there, do this. And finally it was like, yes. It's like, okay, now when the music goes to it, and I have phenomenal composers. Uh, leaving was Stephanie Zaccaro, phenomenal. She was still in college at the time. And then uh, Taylor Bradshaw did both Taxi and he did By Blood because it just seemed like more of a Taylor film to me. Uh, phenomenal young people, just phenomenal. Mm. And um, I knew that the music would be the last, last, piece of it that would really drive it where it needed to go and it did and then it's finally the point where it's all done and we're all like 
<laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. Um, and I didn't know if anybody would notice the things that painstakingly were driving me insane. Sure. Because yeah. in my feeling, if, if I can't make a film that was better than the one before, then I shouldn't be making movies. You're right. You know? That's a very, you always lift the bar. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the advertising mantra. Destroy yeah, the old. and Something may not work. It may be really good quality and it may not work for some people, you know, mm -hmm. so I get that. But um, that's like leaving is um, the kind of movie where if you get it, I, I will have more people come up to me going, oh my, oh my God, you know, that, that just touched me. That just, you know, where some people go, I don't understand. So it's, you're making it for the people who are going to understand. get it. The deep, right. yeah, a deep. Right. Yeah. yeah, so that, I think, actually has gotten accepted to less festivals, still a lot, but less festivals than Taxi, but wins more awards. Okay. Because it's just, if, it, if you know what it is and you feel it, it's just so powerful. Yeah. That, and, and that's why I want to do this. I mean, Taxi is just to make you laugh. Taxi is just to really, you know, take you someplace crazy because it's, I mean, it's a taxi driver. All the left are zombies. And he ain't giving up his license. And that's, that's it. So that's really the really <laughs> crazy comedy Let me ask you a technical question or two. But, but sure. yeah. a couple of things. Before we begin, I've always known your boyfriend as John Marion. Is it John Marine? John Marine. It's actually pronounced Marine. It looks like it's Marion. Marine, it's and Marine. And I, I, obviously, no disrespect. I just never realized okay. that. Yeah. Wonderful actor when he worked with us on the Here's mm -hmm. a Set. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, these are shorts. Mm -hmm. And you put together a budget and you get all the people together. Do you work mm -hmm. with SAG people? Because obviously sure. they're yeah. all SAG. Uh, everything I've done so far has been SAG, um, either ultra low budget, which you, you can use people that are non-SAG if you right. need to. Uh, my shorts have all been SAG, um, SAG short. Uh, I'm doing a web series now, which is new media, which is supposed to be mostly SAG, but it's, you know, it doesn't all have to be SAG. And that's called a Couple of Guys, which is the next thing I'm working on. Okay. Joe Halsey, who is in Leaving and By Blood, is going to be in that. And Sal Rendino, who is in Leaving, is going to be in it. He's now in the Get Down. Uh, that's right. That's, that's and coming I've got Sean it. Young just signed on. Boy, and I got um, Kevin Brown from 30 Rock and Brian O'Halloran from Clerks. And I got Bobby Plahesse from Blue Bloods. And wow. I got some, it's like now I got to like get into the raising money thing, which is, oh, it's always nerve wracking. It always works, but it's nerve wracking. Sure. Um, you seem to be good at it, Deborah. Well, I think when people see what you do, especially if they haven't ever been involved in the business and they're like, I really, how do I get involved with this? And then, you know, you explain it to them and, and they get hooked. You know, they get hooked after that. Sure. So um, that's the next thing. This is much bigger than the other things I've done sure. because we have a pilot um, with all the names in it and then uh, 10 additional episodes. So we have the first season already written. And, um, you know, the hope is that we can get the first few done and, and draw attention to it so somebody else will fund the rest. Sure, of and, then that's, and, and yeah. you may have sure. sponsors yeah. or whatever the case might be. Yeah. I, I totally get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, before we go anywhere, mm -hmm. let's talk about how to get back in touch with you again. Mm -hmm both okay. personally for, as a director mm -hmm. and how you need to be addressed over as at the Nassau County Film Commission. So, okay. Well, Film Commission, as we know, is separate. Film right. Festival is, is even separate. Uh, that's long out film .com. Uh, My website is intentionfilmsandmedia.com. Okay, so intentionfilmsandmedia.com intention is Deborah Markowitz's right. website. Right, that's and then good. my email is Deborah, D-E-B-R-A, dot Markowitz at gmail.com. You know, simple. Yeah, simple. So, so I do direct. I also cast. I cast a couple of features. I'm doing very well in the festival circuit right now. Uh, one film called Stuff, uh, directed by uh, Suzanne Guasi, who is from Suffolk. By the way, she's amazing. And um, um, her partner, Teresa, is one of the other producers. And uh, we cast some amazing talent in that. It has been all over the world so far. Um, really, really loving that film. Uh, and then I also cast another feature called Living with the Dead. Um, uh, uh, Christine Batugian, uh, Batugian is the director of that mm -hmm. and also wrote a phenomenal writer. So that's, you know, making its, its round as well as, you know, around the world. The sure, sure, show. sure. So, you know, the hope is they get sold, make a lot of money, and I finally make some money. But, um, you know, it's, it, I've cast a lot of other films. I just did one called Burr. Uh, which was a short, which is hopefully going to be turned into either a series or a feature. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, the director is, uh, his, his music name, because he was in the music industry, also was Joey MHZ. Uh, and he um, actually convinced me to play a role in it, which I didn't want to do. But he talked me into it. And, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Because it's, he went on the lead. I'm like, Joey, I haven't acted since high school. Actually, I acted about 15 years ago. I did a few small roles because people ask me. I'm like, I really didn't want to do it. But you have an, ex an excellent stage presence. I see that in you. Yeah, but like, this wow. was a lead. <laughs> this was six page of dialogue. Okay, I had it's not that big of a deal. Oh, you can do it. it. You can do it. It was a big deal for me. That's a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and it's a science fiction thing, and there's all these effects. And my, John Marine was his AD on that, and he did like such amazing stuff for this guy. That's mm. so yeah. amazing. Well, here's the deal. 
We're almost at the end of the show already, so let me just get a few things out there. Number one, guys, in 2016, the filmmaker show on Madhouse Live, we, we, we may be moving our time slot. I'll give that uh, all up to you as I hear more from the powers that be over here. And speaking of the powers that be, I want to thank you, Deborah Markowitz, for being with us tonight. Thank you, Jerry. And I want to thank you, Michelle, for really a beautiful interview. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm more in awe of her, and you're, you're doing the interviews. Great. <laughs> I want to thank some of my friends that, that appear on the uh, credits, like Alana Phillips and Leland Prater and Kyle and Tom and so many people. Watch our credits on the back. You'll actually see the names now. My own sister, my daughter, everybody's in those credits. Why not? We threw them in there. Uh, on behalf of the Nassau County Film Commission, I thank you. And Tom Mealy, Vicki Mealy, Janine Zarilli, sorry, Janine, and of course, Tommy Ma, the Archon. Uh, I want to thank everybody on behalf of Madhouse TV to have you here tonight. You are such a pleasure and honor. I thank you. And with that, we'll see you next week either here at Madhouse TV Live or on Channel 20. I'm Can Jerry I get a Parisi. Word in edgewise? Oh, you want to get an edge? Yes. One word in edgewise. It was wonderful having you here. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it. Oh, right. oh, oh, excuse me, dear. Why don't you say it? Because the Scrooge voice is back again. <laughs> Never goes away, the Scrooge voice. I did an audition three weeks ago, honest to God, for a, it was for a, uh, a video of some sort. And as I'm doing it, it's an exercise video, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing this thing, and suddenly I started talking like this. And they looked at me, I was like, oh, I didn't get the thought. <laughs> but anyway, on behalf of that, good night, guys. Thanks for watching night. us here on the Filmmaker Show on madhousetv.com.